Hello, my name's Evan. I'm from Musician's Friend, and I'm here with Devin from Electron. Hey, Evan, how are you? I'm great. How are good. you? Very good, thank you. So, Devin, you're here to talk to us about some of your nifty instruments. What do we have here? So, what we've got here is the Analog Rhythm. It's a true analog drum machine with eight voices. Now, I noticed that says eight voice drum computer. Yeah. That, that basically means it's not just generating sounds and then you have to trigger them with MIDI. Uh, there's an integrated step sequencer, so each of your eight voices has its own uh, step sequence. Right here, these 16 steps represent one bar of music, but you can quickly go up to four bars and have four bar patterns. Also, if you want to combine patterns together to make eight bars or even 16 bar patterns, that's as easy as holding down one of the pattern bank buttons and selecting two patterns at once. So, if I have the sequencer running, as I select my drum track, I can quickly sequence it out right here. What gets really fun is that once I have drums sequenced out on the grid, I can touch any one of the drums that I've sequenced out and turn a parameter knob and lock that, that sonic texture to that step. Does that make sense? So for example, I could have a kick drum and then I could quickly add some pitch automation just by holding down the step and turning the pitch. And I also noticed that you have this connected to this laptop. Right. So is this a digital drum machine? No, basically uh, it's all analog, but what goes on is under the hood, there's uh, multi-channel audio conversion happening. And so we actually have eight channels of audio streaming over a single USB cable into my DAW, and analog rhythm is being hosted as a VST plugin right now in Ableton Live. So while it's all generated in the analog domain, actual vibrating electrons, I mean, we have analog filters, we have analog overdrive stages, it's being converted and then sent over USB. Okay, so is the audio in that scenario, is that coming from the laptop yes. playing out of the DAW, or is yeah. it actually coming from the drum machine itself? So right now, I don't have any of the analog outputs connected. Uh, I have an instrument going into the inputs to demonstrate that you can run uh, other gear in through the analog rhythm, but right now we have no analog outputs connected, and we have all the audio going into the DAW, and I'm just listening to it through the headphone output. So essentially, you're using this like a plugin. Yeah, it's absolutely as if you were using it as a VST plugin, but all the sound is actually generated in the analog domain. So what are some of the things that are beneficial when using something as a VST plugin, or when using VST plugins? Well, first of all, you have the ability to break all your audio into individual channels and record them you know, as multi-track, and then go back and you know, add your favorite plugins and everything. So with this multi-channel audio streaming, you can do that. Second of all, the USB cable is also carrying a very, very high resolution synchronization signal so that when I hit play in my DAW, the electron sequencer starts in sync and stays in sync in, in a much cleaner, tighter way than MIDI ever could. Make sense? Yes, yeah, so just to clarify, so you know, folks, they'll buy a hardware drum machine okay. as opposed to using a plugin. There's right. a lot of plugins on the market with all these capabilities right. because they think that the hardware, and it does in most cases, is gonna sound a lot better. Yeah. So when the sound actually gets transferred by yeah. this cable into yeah. the computer, yeah. is the analog sound that this is generating being preserved? Is it like, how's the A to D converter, oh. for example, on this? Oh, absolutely, no, very good question. No, it's a high quality A to D converter. I mean, the fact that we put so much effort into making real analog filters per voice, real analog overdrive stage per voice, absolutely, the goal is to capture it and get it into your DAW, just as if you were using a high quality audio sound card. But with this, it doesn't interfere with your existing sound card setup. It actually acts uh, parallel to it. So it doesn't take any additional memory resources from the DAW when you're using it. Yeah, no, that's beautiful. All, all the yeah. audio streaming is handled by the VST plugin itself. So if I have another audio interface, I can keep using that, and then I can use this in parallel with it. So Devin, tell me a little bit more about the uh, advantages of the VST integration between this device and the laptop. Okay, so uh, I mentioned before that there's multi-channel audio streaming and tight sequencer synchronization. Now, the USB cable also allows for um, high resolution parameter control. So if I'm here using the VST plugin and I'm turning all the knobs and I'm adding these automation lanes that, that electronic musicians are very familiar with, all that data can go back through the USB cable um, with, with such high bandwidth. There's not gonna be any clogging or anything. So if you write automation within the DAW, yeah. according to the parameters yeah. that are compatible with these two devices, that's yeah. actually gonna control what's happening in here? Yeah, exactly, and there's a one-to-one -one relationship. All the parameters are controllable from the front panel on the hardware, but they're also all completely controllable from the VST plugin. And they'll plugin. be written either way into yeah. this, recorded and played back. Yeah, exactly. So, um, 
this looks like Ableton Live. So what other, is this, this is compatible, I assume, with anything that's compatible with the VST pl plugin? VST and audio units. So that means that's Ableton right. Live, Bitwig, Logic, that kind of thing. If I show you the plugin here, we have everything that I do on the front panel here is mirrored with the plugin. I mean, we can see every single parameter. If I load up a new drum sound, we can see it right there. And then of course, uh, Analog Rhythm also has high quality effects under the hood. There's high quality uh, delay and reverb, which are send based. But then <clears throat> on the master bus, you also have a stereo analog distortion and a stereo analog compressor. You can see the settings right here in the plugin. This is giving you the power of analog sound with the workflow of a modern DAW. One thing that I haven't mentioned yet is that when you're using analog rhythm as a plugin in a DAW, you also have total recall functionality. That means when I save a session, it's gonna take a snapshot of all my patches and all my patterns, wrap them right up into that session, and next time I open that session, the analog rhythm will snap back into shape. So Love I mean, that. Yeah, so you so, don't have to use the preset memory on this. No, You've and got you, it all right here. And if you ever used you know, analog gear or vintage gear, scrolling through presets or even finding the old preset that you use, that's a thing of the past now. Just a little overview of the architecture here. Um, it, you've got eight analog voices, right? But each of those eight analog drum voices also has a digital sample playback engine. So you can layer in a digital sample of your choice right on top of the analog voice. And you can even load in your own samples via USB. So you can load them right up into here and you can assign them to yeah. these triggers. Exactly, exactly. So if I have a snare drum here, yeah. right now, that's the analog portion. Right? And we'll hear what that sounds like if I kind of... I mean, it's like putty in your hands. There's... <laughs> you know, it doesn't have to sound like a snare drum if you don't want it to. What happened to the snare drum? Right, so I can, I can turn that down. Then I can go ahead and turn up the sample playback portion, the digital part of the voice. And now I have a list of samples. And then I can blend them together. Right? So your mixer yeah. will allow you to mix those two engines. Exactly, so yeah. you have an analog voice, or you have an analog portion of the voice, a sample portion of the voice, they mix together with volumes that you choose, then those go through an entirely analog signal path from there on out. Uh, Multi-mode analog filter and analog overdrive stage. And you, so you have eight of those under the hood. And then all those eight voices are mixed into the master bus, which features a stereo analog distortion and a stereo analog compressor. And it's a full featured analog compressor. It's got all the uh, functions that you'd expect. And that's important because it acts like glue. A lot of people are producing electronic music in a DAW environment and they have the ability to just, you know, throw on any one of the compressors that they choose. But it's actually quite rare to have a fully featured analog stereo compressor uh, in a hardware drum machine these days. Let's talk about the way that you program an actual full-on song with this. So I notice you have scene, performance, you've yeah. got track, pattern, song. I know yeah. on some machines, scene refers to a certain section, number of bars, and right. then if you go to scene number two, it's the next section. Is that how this works? Right. These four buttons up here are a little bit different because these are the pad modes. So when we say scene, what we mean is an on and off state that wildly changes uh, the sonic characteristics uh, to, to, to settings that you, that you select. If I have a pattern playing, uh, I can activate or deactivate a scene. And what that is, it's like a giant, it's like 10 hands all going in and turning several knobs at once. That's what we mean by a scene. But as far as programming out a song, what you do is you build a song based on patterns. So we have eight banks and each bank has 16 patterns. So if I go to pattern A1 uh, and I just clear out everything and I start the sequencer running, you know, I could program out some, some sounds. Right? I could program out a pattern, then I could program another pattern for A2 and A3. And then if you want to string those all together uh, in like a song format um, that, that plays once all the way through without any real-time interaction by you, you can go into song mode and, and sort of make a, a playlist. So Devin, I, I would assume that these pads do more than just trigger drum sounds. And I notice you've got these modes here. Can right. you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. So we have actually five different modes that the pads allow you to enter. So uh, of course, there's the standard uh, velocity sensitive uh, triggering of the sounds, but then you have four separate modes here. This one is mute mode. This allows me to mute and unmute in real time in basically any way that you could think about. So for example, I can, I can of course mute multiple sounds at once. Uh, I can solo one or more sounds at once. I can even queue up multiple sounds to mute or unmute all at once. So in a live performance context, we've got all that covered. The next mode we have is chromatic. This allows you to play any sound across a four octave range. And you can also program the sounds in as easy as, uh, 
I can just hold down a sound and then select what pitch it is. That simple. The next mode we have is scene mode. Scene mode is basically like performance macros. It allows me to control multiple parameters just with the touch of a single button. So I can have a pattern playing and then when I hit scene, it's as if you know 10 separate hands came in and all turned knobs to a certain amount that, that I as the user select. Uh, so with one simple pattern, uh, you can have all sorts of different sonic changes. And can you program how long that scene actually activates for? If I'm understanding this correctly, you can have all kinds of effects and things going yeah. on in a scene. Right. Can you program how long that lasts? That's manually controlled. That's a scene is it's an on-off state controlled gotcha. by you. Right. Gotcha. So you turn it on, it does its thing, and when you want right. it to stop, you turn it off. Real-time performance. Right. Right. And I mean, you can imagine the implications for that. For example, if you have a pattern playing, you can have a scene where one one element is highlighted, the rest are down slightly, but and then the, the highlighted element has a little bit more reverb depth on it. I mean, it really allows you to do sophisticated maneuvers uh, at the touch of a button. The last mode we have is performance mode. Performance mode is a bit like scene mode, but this time it's not an on and off state, it's pressure sensitive. So the harder I press, the more multiple parameters change. And I'm talking any parameter across the device, delay time, which sample you have selected, filter cutoff. You can all stack those onto a single button. In fact, you can stack up to 48 parameters onto a single performance pad and control them all with the pressure of your finger. I noticed that you have this vintage drum machine sitting here. And yeah. I'm curious as to yeah. why this is here and does this work somehow with this? Yes, absolutely. So you'll notice in the back of analog rhythm you have MIDI in, out, and through. Pretty standard, right? The out and the through also double as vintage DIN sync outputs to drive and synchronize uh, pre-MIDI drum machines uh, without the need for an external sync box. So that means you don't need to buy any extra interfacing. These will work together perfectly in synchronization and be controlled with one button, right? And then I have the output of the drum machine going into the audio input of analog rhythm and being mixed in uh, into the master bus. So you can see that whether you're interfacing vintage drum machines and running them into analog rhythm, or you're running all the audio from rhythm into your laptop, uh, it provides a very, very unique and powerful bridge between vintage and analog and modern and digital. That's fantastic. I can't wait to pick one up for myself. Devin, thank you very much. Check out the analog rhythm at musiciansfriend.com.